Welcome to the FNF Victory Road Draft League Season 2 Battle Number 7. This battle is going to be pitting the Visionary Tricksters, which is King Fuse's team, versus I Like Corsola, which is Z-Quig's team. As a reminder, the Mega Pokemon available are Mega Beedrill and Mega Scizor, respectively. Both have appeared. We also have Magnazone with Z... I believe any Z move enabled, actually. Or maybe Attack Z moves. No, Attack Z moves enabled. And then we have Gothitelle with any Z move enabled. This is going to be a really interesting battle. It looks like both trainers are looking at each other's teams saying, Oh my gosh, I'm scared of this team. But who will be the one to emerge victorious? We'll know quite in quite a bit. Uh, the, the team of... Kingfuse is actually looking very bulky with both, both Clefable and Toxapex being able to stall pretty easily. Magnazone can form a nice core with those Pokemon as well, although he is going to have to be careful of ground moves, particularly from Gliscor. Um, there is also an interesting Pokemon coming from Z-Quig's team, which is Gothitelle. Gothitelle does have the ability to use Shadow Tag to trap an opponent. And that is going to be a really interesting experience as well. We haven't seen Gothitelle in League yet, so I'm really excited to see how that goes. Of course, we have Corsola here, which will be a fun addition to the team. Will we see Corsola go offensive? I just want to see Corsola go buck wild in this battle. Let's see what it does. Um, finally, there's Cloyster on King Fuse's team. And that's going to be a Pokemon that could be really hard to deal with once it gets going. Although Scizor on z -Quig's team can use Priority Bullet Punch to break that uh, 1 HP if it's brought down to its Sash. So anything could happen. This will be really interesting. I think we'll see some defending, some attacking. Overall, a good battle. So without any further ado, I think we could begin. Thinking we might see Beedrill lead just so it could U-turn out and pivot to safety. It can pretty much U-turn against most Pokemon uh, pretty easily since it has high speed. It only has to be worried about Scizor and its priority bullet punch. On the other side, I'm not sure who z -Quigs will lead with. I'm thinking maybe Gliscor to set up Stealth Rock. Nope, we have Corsola lead and Beedrill. We have Corsola with a heart at the end because Z-Quigs loves Corsola. So we'll see what happens. Corsola might go for the Stealth Rock setup. And Beedrill goes for that U-turn, hitting hard right off the bat, switching into Clo Cloyster. Indeed, Corsola does go for the Stealth Rock setup. If, Clo if Corsola has Rock Blast, it could actually hit Cloyster and break the Sash. However... I'm not sure if Corsola's Rock Blast will do enough unless it has Hustle. Going straight into Cloyster avoids that damage from Stealth Rock, which would break the probable Sash that it has, allowing it to Shell Smash safely. Cloyster looking to be an incredibly threatening Pokemon right now. In comes Muk Alola. And Cloyster goes for the Rock Blast. It does not set up a Shell Smash. The Rock Blast ends up doing about 56% to Muk, so it can live another one if there are no critical hits on the Rock Blast hits. Drizzle Boy commenting that he should have switched into Toxapex to eat Corsola, and it is true. In Gen 7, uh, Corsola is hunted and eaten by Toxapex and Marini, which is why they appear on the Corsola SOS battle instead of having a normal encounter. Both Cloyster and Muck looking at each other, seeing what the other will do. Mm -hmm. 
Will Muck attack Cloyster? We'll see. Muck may not live an Icicle Sphere, and ooh, that's exactly what Cloyster decides to use. Icicle Sphere is going to hit five times thanks to Skill Link taking Muck out and finishing the rest of its HP off. But now, a different Pokemon could come in. Will we see Rotom Heat, perhaps, or Scizor come in to challenge Cloyster? In comes Rotom Yeet the Rotom Heat. Strong Volt Switch will allow Rotom Yeet to get out of this situation. We might see a switch into Palosan to prevent the Volt Switch. Or will Cloyster be bold and decide to go for the Rock Blast against Rotom Heat? And the strong Volt Switch hits, leaving Cloyster at 1% HP. Z-Quigs is now free to switch into a different Pokemon. I'm guessing we'll see Scizor with the priority Bullet Punch. Indeed, we see Rezor the Scizor taking that Rock Blast, but it's not going to do much damage. It only does about 30%, leaving Scizor at approximately 70%, 67%. And now the Bullet Punch is going to take out Cloyster. Crisis averted for Z-Quigs. Cloyster, an extremely powerful Pokemon and a good matchup versus his team in general. Now we have Magnezone coming out. If it has Magnet Pull, Scizor will not be able to retreat. Actually, Scizor could still retreat if it has U-Turn. It's all a matter of who's faster, Magnezone or Scizor, if it has U-Turn. If it has U-Turn, it could switch out into a safer pick, such as Rotom Heat. And in comes the bullet punch from Mega Scizor. Hidden Power, however, is going to take it out. Hidden Power Fire. It's likely that Scizor was unable to retreat because of the Magnet Pole. However, it is safer for Gliscor to come in now that it is confirmed that Magnezone has Hidden Power Fire and not Hidden Power Ice. One of the biggest obstacles to Gliscor coming in versus Magnezone would be that it, the potential for it to have Hidden Power Ice, but because it doesn't have Hidden Power Ice, it's a lot safer to come in now. We could also see Rotom Heat come in trying to use a Overheat, perhaps. Overheat will hit any of the Pokemon except Toxapex uh, pretty hard, but Toxapex doesn't want to take a Volt Switch. Score right now is 5-4, but this match is far from over, with Z-Quig still having some interesting options to use. 
Rotom Heat is the one to come out. Rotom Yeet ready to go for the overheat, I'm assuming. And Palosan comes in to take the move overheat. Overheat's going to do 63% big chunk of its HP. And Rotom Heat now has uh, its special attack lowered down, but another another overheat's going to bring it down to 6%. Shore up is going to allow Palosand to restore HP. Not a good position for Rotom Heat to be in because Overheat barely took it down. In comes Corsola, who seems to have Regenerator as its ability as it came in stronger than last time. But it will have to be careful of any ground moves used by Palosand, and Palosand is going to take a Scald. Its defense has gone up, but it seems that Corsola, surprisingly, is actually faster than Palosand, so one more Scald will take it down. Corsola actually goes for the Toxic instead of the Scald, interestingly, um, and now they are both Toxic, Corsola having a little bit more Toxic damage done to it than Palosand. Might be smart for Corsola to switch out at this point to prevent Toxic from doing any more damage and to allow Regenerator to restore some more HP. I think Glyscore actually might be a good switch in at this point. Oh, and a light screen goes up, but the Earth Power is going to hit with a critical hit that might have mattered because of the light screen. Palosand is still standing strong right now. I think we might see Gliscor come out, especially because it can afford to take a Toxic due to Poison Heal. Actually, it's Gothitelle who comes out. Gothitepic. Oh, Gothitepic. Like epic Gothitelle. Nice. So Gothitelle has come out. Gothitelle probably not going to want to be toxic right now. Palosand is enjoying the effects of its defense being doubled by being hit by a water move. But the Toxic it does have the ability to wear it down pretty quickly. And Gothitelle goes with the Z-move, never-ending nightmare, taking down Palosand. Gothitelle will now have a lot easier of a time knowing that Palosand can't threaten it with Shadow Ball. And also, Palosand uh, does not um, get trapped by Arena Trap, whereas all the other Pokemon do. However... Mega Beedrill will see, still be a big threat to Gothitelle, being able to take it out with a U-turn. However, Clefable is actually the one we see come in. Score is 4-3 right now. Both teams have healthy Pokemon for the most part.
and Clefable's going to use this opportunity to set up Calm Mind, but Gothitelle is going to do the same exact thing. The thing is, with Unaware, Clefable ignores the opponent's stat boosts, so to Clefable, it's as if Gothitelle has no Calm Mind set up. Oh, actually, this Clefable doesn't have Unaware. It has Magic Guard because it didn't take damage from the Stealth Rock. So Gothitelle's Calm Mind boost actually still does apply. Gothitelle's sitting pretty comfortably behind a Light Screen and a Calm Mind boost. So Psyshock is going to be enough to take out Clefable. Who will be the next to come in? I think it's likely that we'll see Mega Beedrill come in to go for the U-turn. Score is now 3-3. Both sides have rocks up, and indeed it's Beedrill who comes out getting hit by those stealth rocks. U-turn will hit incredibly hard right now. Best bet might be to switch to Gliscor for z -Quigs. And the U-turn hits taking down Gothitelle and allowing Beedrill to switch out. However, both of his other Pokemon will have trouble with Gliscor. In comes Magnazone. And Rotom Heat comes out. We still haven't seen the Gliscor. Rotom Heat does have the power to use Overheat against Magnazone. Will Kingfuse switch to Toxapex to take that overheat? Rotom Heat could also go for the Volt Switch. Magnazone's not going to have a good time versus Rotom Heat as Flash Cannon and uh, Thunderbolt will not do a lot of damage and it has Hidden Power Fire, so it probably doesn't have anything to really deal with this Rotom Heat in a in an efficient way. So Rotom, so Magnazone is probably going to want to switch out right now. And the overheat successfully hits Magnazone, taking it down. The score is now 2-2. Two, two. In comes Toxapex. If Rotom is not choiced, it can go for a Volt Switch to bring out Gliscor. Otherwise, a Hard Switch might be the superior option to bring out Gliscor. Gliscor is just going to want to not get burned by a Stray Scald. And Scald hits, will it get burned? No. So Toxic does allow, the, to the Toxic Orb does allow it to get poisoned, which will allow it to heal easily. Now Gliscor is in a really good position versus this team. Taunt is now up. However, Toxapex was not going to go for a move that wasn't an attack. Gliscor better go for the Roost, and indeed it does. Toxapex probably going to still use Scald. Scald hitting critically yet again, but the Poison Heal, even with critical hits, is going to be enough to bring Gliscor back to safety. Three critical hits in a row! Crazy stuff. But Gliscor can just stall it out with Roost. 
And it looks like this Toxapex is getting four critical hits in a row. That is crazy. Gliscor is still roosting, however. Scald is going to hit critically another time. Five times of critical Scalds hitting in a row. Gliscor still sitting comfortably. Scald's going to hit six critical hits in a row. And Gliscor goes for the Swords Dance. Scald is going to hit critically yet again. So this... I, I understand now. Toxapex has Merciless, which means against a poisoned opponent, it will always hit critically. That's why the critical hits are coming. That makes sense. I was so confused. I was like, wait, what? All these critical hits. Toxapex usually runs Regenerator. So Merciless on Toxapex is surprising. Here comes the taunt from Gliscor. Scald is going to keep hitting. Is Gliscor going to go for the PP stall on Scald? He only has nine roosts left. And Glasgow goes for the Earthquake. It does about 39%. Toxapex can't heal that off due to the effects of Taunt, although Taunt has now ended. Gliscor is now going for that Swords Dance to boost up to big levels. One Earthquake now will deal massive damage. Toxpex is going to have to go for the Haze. Ooh, and a critical hit from Gliscor actually hits, taking down Toxapex. Taste of its own medicine with those critical hits. One more hit from Earthquake will be enough to take down Beedrill. And indeed, that's exactly what happens. Beedrill goes down, and Gliscor is able to turn this battle around. Very impressive performance from Gliscor. I was thinking Gliscor was going to be that, that pick at the end that really was uh, instrumental once Cloyster went down. Very strong match from both sides. Z-Quigs comes out victorious, so that's a 2-0 victory for I Like Corsola over the Visionary Tricksters, which is King Fuse team. Great match overall from both sides. It was really well played. Really strong start to the league from both players. And... Yeah, really exciting. So that is it for this match. We have one more match of week one coming up. Stay tuned for that. And this is Noel from Sun and Friendly. I'll see you then.